Talk about movies with you Talk about movies with you We'll learn about behind the scenes and deeper meanings Cause this is just a film review Hi, so for this uh, special holiday episode of Film Recommendations I thought I would start off with a song uh, in my usual manner for some of the more musical uh, videos that I've recorded. So I'm going to move the mic a little bit away from my mouth so that you can hopefully hear me still and still hear the guitar. Okay, so here goes. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird, here to stay is the new bird. He sings a love song as we roll along, walking in a winter wonderland. In the meadow we can build a snowman Then pretend that he is Parson Brown He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man But you can do the job when you're in town And later on we'll conspire As we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we've made Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we can build a snowman And pretend that he is a circus clown We'll have lots of fun with Mr. Snowman Until the other kids just knock him down when it snows, ain't it thrilling? Though your nose gets a chilling. We'll frolic and play the Eskimo way. Walking in a winter wonderland. Anyway, I figured that song would be inoffensive to people of different religions, since the only real mention of religion in that particular song is uh, Parson Brown. And, you know, it's just generic character asking if the couple that the... Uh, Right, that the singer is singing about um, is married, so no biggie. Anyway, I know there's probably copyright infringement all over that song, but you know it's just me performing it. I'm not, I'm not saying it's my song. Um, I didn't write it. I just looked up the tab music uh, to play for fun uh, for you as part of this. Uh, you know, uh, holiday special uh, episode of Film Recommendations. So again, welcome. And uh, I'll uh, start with a sort, of an, sort of a one-off Christmas film, and then I'll get into a small franchise uh, that they've done. Uh, the first film uh, that I want to discuss is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Now, I've seen this a few times at most. Uh, it came out when I was real little, and uh, uh, I saw it on TV here and there, but my parents didn't really want me watching it because um, some of the humor in it is a little bit mature. Anyway, so um, in this film, it's pretty much your typical uh, deal where Clark W. Griswold has these, um, as played by Chevy Chase, 
has uh, these pie-in-the-sky ideals of what he wants uh, a vacation to be like um, from when he was a kid in the 1950s. And he tries to make that a reality in his own life, but of course things go horribly wrong because he's klutzy or something, uh, some strange matter of circumstance happens to come in. Or Eddie, his hillbilly, uh, his hillbilly cousin-in-law, uh, happens to, you know, uh, somehow mess things up, or random stuff like that. Um, anyway, uh, so it's a little bit of a replay of everything that happened in, um, in uh, National Lampoon's Vacation and the sequel National Lampoon's European Vacation. Uh, it's always a little bit funny because in all three films, and even going into um, into Vegas Vacation, the last film in the series, uh, the characters of uh, Audrey and Rusty, or Russ, or however they choose to call him in the in that particular film, uh, are always different actors. And uh, the somewhat cool part is that. With the exception of the actors in European Vacation, uh, you know the 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 kids playing the parts have gone on to do uh, somewhat more successful stuff. Like uh, in National Lampoon's Vacation, uh, the, uh, the the actor who played uh, uh, Russell there was uh, Anthony Michael Hall, who was of course part of the Brat Pack and later went on to uh, have success uh, as an adult in the uh, USA series The Dead Zone uh, and uh, later on uh, in various other films of course he was in uh, Edward Scissorhands as uh, the bully uh, character I can't remember his exact name but you know if you see it you will probably recognize him although when he was a teenager, he was actually quite scrawny and geeky, so, um, and that was the character he tended to play, but anyway, uh, and, uh, then of course he was in The Dark Knight, uh, most recently, and, uh, he's just kind of come out of nowhere as this, uh, very, uh, surprisingly prominent, uh, supporting actor, uh, and, uh, leading man in some ways, so that's a bit of a surprise, and then, uh, in... Uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, you have uh, you ha you have some really good actors uh, in that. Anyway, I'll I'll move on from that. And uh, basically, what it is is it's a series of sketches. Um, not not so much uh, a contiguous film as a series of sketches where each one kind of plays into the next, at best. Um, like. Uh, Oh, the first one before they really go for the titles. Um, or actually, no, I want to say it's just after the titles. Uh, anyway, um, is uh, they're out in the woods uh, going to cut down a tree, and uh, Clark forgets a saw or an axe to cut the tree, and so he has to dig out the tree and then tie it to the roof of their station wagon and haul it back home and of course then it's too big to fit in the house anyway so um, he chainsaws it down and uh, it's still too big and it's this very full tree so he ties it up to get it in the door and then cuts the rope with a pair of gardening shears I think it is and uh, the branches all fly out one breaks a window it's just really uh, crazy uh, some of the humor is a little bit slapstick. Um, then, of course, the the relatives all show up, and they're all older, uh, like Clark's parents and uh, the wife's parents. Um, I forget the the wife's character's name, but she's played by Beverly D'Angelo, uh, who you know is very pretty in this film, and I've seen her in some other stuff. Uh, she's a good, solid leading actress. Uh, anyway, so all kinds of crazy stuff ensues. Uh, you should keep an eye on the on Griswold's boss uh, at the company he works at up in Chicago. 
uh, because that is uh, Bill Murray's uh, brother, older brother, who also does the voice of uh, the Flying Dutchman on SpongeBob SquarePants and Captain Knuckles on the uh, on uh, the recent uh, recently ended series, uh, the marvelous misadventures of flapjack uh i think it was called i know it was the i know it was called flapjack for short uh anyway it was kind of a it was kind of a, a take on the spongebob archetype character of a childlike character with a kind of uh rogue uh, uh as his cohort and uh you know those kinds of things and of course both were maritime uh, anyway, so, yeah, uh, Bill Murray's brother plays a part uh, in this film, which isn't surprising since uh, since the Murray brothers, uh, you know, have all been closely tied to Bill Murray's work and, uh, of course, uh, were, I believe, somewhat known by John Hughes and uh, also known by, would have been known by Chevy Chase, so you had uh, all of the SNL ties, as well as the John Hughes ties. Uh, John Hughes, of course, having been responsible for the Brat Pack films like uh, Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, uh, Pretty in Pink, and uh, St. Elmo's Fire. Uh, so, this is just stuff to keep in mind because you have these connections. Uh, John Hughes, I believe, was an executive producer, and he produced a lot of films uh, where they were centered around Chicago, uh, because that was kind of the uh, new mecca of uh, the 80s economy. Uh, new York and Chicago it kind of took the East Egg, West Egg um, thing that uh, is alluded to in uh, The Great Gatsby, by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and I bet you didn't think that there were going to be any ties to classic literature in a film review of National Lampoon's Vacation. Well, there you go. F. Scott Fitzgerald and John Hughes and uh, 80s films. Don't say you didn't learn anything by, uh, by watching a YouTube video. Anyway, uh, so I kind of recommend it if you're in the mood for kind of, you know, light-hearted entertainment. It's not really for the whole family, though. Uh, don't watch it on TV. TV edits it for crap and makes it run long. Um, you know, I paused it, went and did something else, and uh, then uh, fast-forwarded through the commercials. I watched it on ABC Family, which I find to be an absolutely infuriating network to watch anything, and the downside is that they happen to show some stuff that, you know, I kind of want to watch. I'd just as soon pop in a DVD of just about anything I have in my collection, uh, a lot of which I have up on the series already. Uh, but I haven't recommended every film that I've seen, and I haven't recommended every film that they show on television. Um, you know, which is a lot. There are a lot of movies out there, and some of them are really bad. So I'll just keep moving along. So National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation um, is about as good as any of the National Lampoon Vacation movies. I consider European Vacation to be a better movie overall in terms of humor. Um, but I would say Christmas Vacation gets about two to three stars out of five. Um, I'll just go for a good two and a half. It's a good solid halfway decent movie, and it has some good actors in it for Christmas Vacation. Uh, and anyway, moving on. Uh, the next film is an entire franchise of uh, Christmas films, uh, and that is uh, the Santa Claus series starring Tim Allen uh, and uh, Judd Nelson. And uh, some of the other actors in it are pretty good. Uh, I saw the first one uh, on TV, I think it was, and uh, they were showing it on cable, um, you know, not long after it came out, and it was okay. Not great, but okay. It kind of had the mode of, like, you know, of, like, trying to make it, like, Christmas all year round, 
but you know the fact is that Christmas is one day a year and it's really not uh, about gifts and Santa it's a religious holiday you want to talk about the war on Christmas take it out of stores altogether take it out of shopping don't you know I'm okay with hanging up uh, with hanging up decorations around your town around your home in your store uh, if the if the store owner you know wants to if it's if it's a mom and pop store where they run the store okay yeah put up some decorations sure you know and if they want to say Merry Christmas do that but for a chain of stores and I'm getting political here I'm sorry uh, if it's for a chain of stores don't bother you know people are going to go to your store and buy stuff regardless of whether you have holiday shopping holiday deals all that kind of stuff just try and have good prices and have good products anyway enough I'll, I'll put away the soapbox but yeah so uh, in the first Santa Claus film Tim Allen uh, wakes up in the night to hear somebody on his roof and thinks somebody's breaking into his house uh, so he you know calls to the guy up on his roof who of course is in bright red and uh, the guy falls slips off the roof and uh, lands in his yard and disappears and there's nothing but the clothes left and uh, Tim Allen puts on the coat and uh, and without realizing it enters into a contract called the Santa Clause C A L or C L A U S E clause uh, as in the part of a contract uh, that basically means that he has to be the new Santa if you haven't seen this film by now I'm sorry uh, I've ruined the premise of it for you but you would have known that anyway uh, just from the preview uh, he recently is suffering a divorce and uh, he's a very busy businessman uh, doesn't have a lot of time for uh, his uh, his kid who lives with his mom the rest of the time uh, and then on top of that because of the Santa Claus he starts to gain weight he starts to uh, grow a beard even after he shaves it the beard uh, grows right back um, reindeer start following him he kno he knows the names of uh, any kid he sees and that's just the magic that to me is the best film of the franchise the Santa Claus uh, I'll, I'll close it out by saying that uh, they chose a wonderful cast of actors and they could have just left it with the Santa Claus but because Disney and other film companies are greedy uh, they have to make a sequel to a popular film no matter how late it is um, uh, so the point is that by the time the film is done Judd Nelson who is a psychologist and thinks that uh, Tim Allen's character Scott Calvin SC is in a cleverness there um, is insane and has him locked away in a jail uh, so some elves go to uh, spring him from jail uh, and all of the elves are played by children now that was okay and in the first film uh, they had a very pretty girl uh, playing uh, Judy uh, the elf who uh, who gives uh, Scott some uh, some very nice cocoa that's her like special recipe and she play she plays it off as if she is a woman uh, which is really good directing uh, because the elves uh, aren't little kids they're uh, they're adults when we meet them but in later films uh, they play them off as if they're children I find it a little bit upsetting in the uh, in the first film that they seem to have baby babies uh, dressed up as elves to do what exactly I don't know 
it would be better if they just had kids. Um, of course, one cool little cameo is, um, oh, what is that uh, guy's name? I can never remember his name, unfortunately. Uh, I'm just going to type into the magical uh, Christmas Information Machine 2000. Uh, to, known as Google to uh, find the actor's name because I also remembered that he uh, here it is that he was in Serenity and he played uh, the character of Mr. Universe he's also in the show Numbers which I think was recently cancelled unfortunately anyway the character uh, the actor's name is David Crumholtz and uh, he plays some wonderful parts uh, he's a great actor uh, he was also in Adam's Family uh, Values uh, and, uh, you know, just several other great shows. Um, but his part in the film, he plays a grown-up. You know, he's not playing a kid. Uh, I love his part. I, I think he's great. And on top of that, having a Jewish elf is terrific. Because, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense that, you know... The elves would be, uh, you know, Christian necessarily because what Christian would want to work on Christmas. Uh, anyway, uh, although for all I know, they probably take the day off on Christmas since Santa is out making deliveries. But anyway, I, I don't know how elves work. Uh, anyway, so the Santa Claus, uh, he he, Santa uh, Scott Calvin. Uh, sort of rectifies the situation with his ex-wife and her and his ex-wife's uh, new husband and uh, you know just works it out so that uh, they can have a happy relationship that is where they should have stopped uh, you know the last line of the film is uh, you know they they ask uh, the son uh, you know, you know, he's like, I know what I want to be when I grow up, and uh, the the stepdad is like, oh, do you want to be uh, a psychologist or uh, something like that? He's like, no, I want to go into the family business. Ha ha ha, cute. It's it's the Santa Claus. He wants to be the next Santa. Uh, you know, which is cool. You know, I can deal with that. That. That's a good, happy ending. They could have left it at that, and it would have remained a Christmas classic. Then they had to make a sequel. In the sequel, uh, The Santa Claus to The Mrs. Claus, where they really stretched that pun and beat it to death, uh, Scott has to find a wife, according to the contract, um, and uh, in order to do that, he has to go away from the North Pole. Um, but he only has so much magic. And if he runs out of magic, he won't be able to get back to the North Pole. Um, he brings a reindeer with him to fly down. He mounts the reindeer like a horse. Um, and uh, they bring back the, the, the young actress playing Judy the Elf. But... Uh, they play her down a lot, and that makes me sad because her character was a breakthrough character, and they even uh, play down David Crumholtz's character quite a bit. And on top of that, they play the uh, the elves off as if they're they're just kids, uh, when they're not. They're supposed to be full grown ups. Just they look like kids with pointy ears. So I I was really disappointed. Then. They had uh, Comet pig out on candy somehow. I don't know where he got the candy. Um, and then came a fart joke. And I said, you know what? They have totally destroyed the film now. They have. Uh, they've just taken what was a, a decent film, a good film, and they brought in a fart joke. Then on top of that, they uh, they had the ex-wife and the husband 
have their own daughter where even though neither parents have red hair, the daughter has red hair. And the daughter likes Scott Calvin uh, as her uncle, sort of. And, uh, and uh, they get along great, and she knows that he's Santa, so it's all good. Uh, and they make more of a big deal of her character than the uh, than the son who's older, so he's not as cute, uh, I guess. Because uh, in the Santa Claus 2, he's a teenager, he gets in trouble, uh, spraying graffiti all over his school, um, which is administrated by the uh, stern and cold yet beautiful and young uh, principal and uh of course he makes an effort to you know uh win her over uh because she's against christmas and decoration in a public school which you know is like okay that's fine i went to public school all my life we didn't have christmas decoration i am a okay with that you see christmas decoration everywhere else you know, I'm okay with a certain amount of festivity. I'm okay with respecting a person's religion. I'm okay with if a kid wants to take a minute out of their lunch break, out of their study hall, you know, before the morning announcements. If they want to take a moment for prayer at the beginning or end of the day or in the middle of the day when it's not interrupting classes to have a little prayer, fine. Uh, but you know, uh, toys and, and games is not what Christmas is about, I'm sorry. Uh, Christmas is at its heart a religious holiday with respect to uh, the birth of the Christian Messiah, uh, known as Jesus. Um, I'm not saying that's what anybody watching this video has to believe in. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's for uh, your own mind to make up. Uh, so you don't have to believe in what uh, these films believe in. Uh, I'm criticizing these films as films. I'm not criticizing Christmas or Santa. Santa and I, we tight. Anyway, so uh, eventually he wins her over and she decides to be the wife. And, and uh, you know, they settle down. And... Uh, it's like, okay, kind of works. I mean, she's very pretty, but, uh, and she has some fun with it. And uh, they do a little bit at the end where she's kind of dancing around to some music on the set uh, in costume. I don't know why. They just do. Um, I mean, she's a good dancer and she's a very pretty actress, so, you know, whatever. Uh, but moving on from that, because i got to wrap this up. Uh, lastly, uh, the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause. <sighs> the escape clause is basically, did you see Shrek Forever After? Because I did. And I believe it, there will be a review for it coming up. But in that one, Shrek wishes that uh, he had never... Uh, you know, he, he gives up a day of his life, and the day that uh, he ends up giving up was a day he wasn't, uh, was the day he was born. So he ended up not being born, and as a result, uh, he never uh, made his home in the swamp, he never met Donkey, he never, um, uh, he never rescued Fiona, uh, and so forth and so on. Uh, in the escape clause, which came out uh, a good while before, it's it's a few years old now. Um, Jack Frost, played by uh, Martin Short, uh, tricks uh, tricks him after sabotaging. Uh, sabotaging uh, Santa Claus's efforts uh, by sabotaging the factory, uh, making it so that uh, 
his in-laws uh, don't like him uh, making it so that his wife is miserable. You know, really, <clears throat> really just doing creepy, uh, mean stuff. And, um, and of course, the, uh, the ex-wife and uh, the daughter, uh, Lucy, uh, come up to the North Pole to try and keep things going smoothly, and they focus on Lucy instead of the son, who just plays uh, a small part here and there, which I'm really upset by, because it's his son. You know, that's the character. They're supposed to be close and loving. And Anyway, they focus on her, uh, and yeah. So, uh, he ends up thrown into an alternate reality where he's a businessman in, I guess it's New York. It's supposed to be some major city. They don't really ever specify. And uh, then uh, he goes to find out what happened with uh, Mrs. Claus. Uh, character's name is Carol. Uh, turns out she uh, ran off because uh, problems at school just got to be worse. Um, the wife and uh, the husband she remarried ended up uh, ended up breaking up and uh, divorcing again. Uh, so, and uh, Jack Frost turns the North Pole into basically Disney World, uh, which is funny because it's produced by the Walt Disney Company and it's kind of criticizing what Disney World has become, which is you know, come here, buy stuff, uh, you know, see shows, and, uh, and again, they play the elves as if they're kids. So I have, I have reservations about the whole thing. So, you know, uh, it's no big deal, really, but I, I still have my problems with with uh, with this uh, particular uh, franchise, uh, and of course they play the uh, they play even more fart jokes with the reindeer. So I'm just like, okay, you know they they think the audience is stupid. They think the audience is a bunch of groundlings, low with lowbrow senses of humor. How nice. Um, so, I'm not exactly thrilled. I give Santa Claus, the, the original Santa Claus, I give uh, that film a 3 out of 5. Uh, it's good family fare. It has a lot of uh, sweet humor to it. It is... Uh, it, it doesn't really have any adult humor in it. No, no poop jokes, no fart jokes. Uh, really, but uh, in the end, is just kind of a cute film, and is a lot more fun. Uh, the last two in the series, I give a one out of five. Uh, they just stink out loud, and uh, aren't really worth watching. Uh, despite despite the casting, despite the really good casting. Another thing I should mention is that. The third film, you have a young actress dressed up, dressed like Judy at the beginning, but they don't have her speak. And uh, David Krumholtz's uh, character is nowhere to be seen, and they don't explain why. They just that he's gone for no reason uh, from after the the uh, second film where they actually got the actor to come back. I mean, sure, he was probably too old, but who cares, you know? Uh, I liked seeing him, and uh, I liked the character. I thought it was uh, a wonderful addition, but, you know, they probably couldn't get him to sign on, and uh, they probably couldn't... They probably either didn't try or couldn't get the young actress to sign on, and plus, by that time, she probably looked 
far too old. Her body had probably matured, and she wasn't a little girl anymore, uh, as opposed to in the Santa Claus 2, where uh, she was still immature enough to uh, play Judy the Elf again. But, you know... Oh, another plot point from the Santa Claus 2 I forgot is that while Santa Claus is gone, uh, they make a... Uh, a toy, Santa, a toy version of Santa Claus, a robot Santa, to uh, replace him, and he ends up installing a militaristic regime with toy soldiers, forcing the elves to um, make coal for all the naughty boys. So basically, he becomes Santa from Futurama. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much uh, the whole deal, which is why. Santa Claus 2 and Santa Claus 3 get such low ratings. Uh, and I don't recommend you watch the film Santa Claus the movie, because they're going to be showing that in the holiday season. Uh, and that one uh, stars oh John Lithgow and... Uh, oh, goodness, I can't remember the names off the top of my head. Uh... I'll type it into the Wonderful Information Center 5000. Alright, it came out in 1985, and I'm just looking up the cast here. John Lithgow plays an evil businessman. Dudley Moore, that's the one I couldn't think of, and uh, David Huddleston. Uh, as well as Burgess Meredith. Uh, David Hulston plays uh, Santa Claus. Uh, Dudley Moore plays an elf uh, who tries to um, create a machine assembly line for the toys. And uh, John Lithgow plays a businessman uh, who tries to uh, sell candy canes with uh, the reindeer's magic powder uh, that helps them fly, and helps the sleigh fly. Um, he tries to sell candy canes that will make you fly, and he uh, they, he gets in trouble with the law, and he eats a whole bunch of them and ends up floating away into the sky, presumably out into space or just into upper Earth's atmosphere. Can't really say, but if he doesn't come down, he's going to dehydrate um, or suffer the bends because he was rising very quickly. They kind of show him up in space. But it's kind of a disturbing end to it, uh, because he'll freeze, he'll dehydrate, he'll starve, uh, and uh, he'll also be exposed to the elements, including radiation, if he's above the ozone layer. Uh, so, or even in the ozone layer. Uh, not to mention the ozone layer is filled with ozone, which you can't really breathe. So, on top of that, he would have suffocated. So... There's all other kinds of problems. Oh, I see one of the problems with the film films. It was produced by Ilya Salkind, who produced the Superman series. Uh, if you watch one of those Superman reviews I've made, uh, it is uh, he, Salkind really relies on other people's talent uh, in his producing role uh, in order to make a good film, and just wants it done. He doesn't care how you do it. He doesn't care. Um, he doesn't care as long as it's under budget, and he cuts the budget for it like a tip, like a typical producer. Uh, he cuts the budget. He wants it done quicker. Uh, he wants it done more streamlined. And, uh, he wants it to make even more money, which is impossible. Sequels almost never make more money. Superman 2 was one of the only ones uh, in history to ever make, uh, you know, so much money uh, and um, the only exception I think is uh, Star Trek 2 made more money and um, Star Wars 2 made more money uh, I'm talking about Empire Strikes Back of course those made more money than the originals uh, I believe anyway uh, so yeah do not watch Santa Claus the movie uh, came out in 1985 do not watch the Santa Claus 2 or the Santa Claus 3. Watching the original Santa Claus is okay. I think you'll uh, enjoy it a lot more. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is good. I also uh, recommended in another review a film called Joya Noel, which is about uh, the first uh, Christmas uh, that was uh, celebrated uh, during World War One. It's a very, very stirring and thought-provoking movie. Uh, suitable for the kids, I would recommend uh, around 12 to 13 and up in terms of age. Uh, not for the little ones, they won't quite understand. But there's nothing in it that will upset them if you happen to have them uh, there. Uh, and there is some singing in it, so the little kids might enjoy that. Um, there's no sexual content. It's really a very enjoyable movie. Um, it is in English and German and French, uh, but there are subtitles uh, for the different languages, so it is really enjoyable. I highly recommend it. Um, it's a great Christmas movie. It's just a great movie in general. Uh, so, Joyeux Noël, easily four to five stars out of five. Uh, and uh, that'll wrap it up for this uh, holiday episode of Film Recommendations. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa and have a happy new year.